Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit? This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. Hey, sister, I want to share with you something that I actually just had to post on Facebook about this, but it is profound and I think would be, um, it needs to be talked about today. Let's do this. So let's talk about judgment. Judgment is that thing that we all want to say that we don't do, or I'm not a judgmental person, or it's wrong to judge. And although those things can be true, um, you know, the bottom line is, is we judge, right? We judge. It's, it's a hard thing to admit. You know, I, um, became, um, familiar with Brian, Byron Katie's book, which is called Loving What Is and her work. And, um, if you've listened to the podcast for a while, I haven't talked about Byron Katie in a while, but I mean, I used to talk about her all the time because I feel that the work, which is called the work, her work, the work or inquiry is profound. It allows you to really question your thoughts, to know that your thoughts aren't real. They're simply thoughts. And unless you actually take a moment to question them, you'll never actually discover what the real truth is in there, right? And so there's a process that she has. Um, If you want to learn about it, you can, uh, yeah, just go get the book, Loving What Is by Byron Katie. Loving What Is by Byron Katie. Um, Profound. But from being introduced to her work and doing a lot of the work, um, which is her, her inquiry, or it's also called judge your neighbor. Um, you know, it's really seeing that. Now, Byron Kay has a little bit of a different take on it. She's like, well, we all judge. Like, it's what we do, right? And I agree with that, right? I agree. But yet, I also know how it feels when judgment comes out. And that from now reading and going through something called The Judgment Detox, which is another book I would highly recommend by Gabby Bernstein, Gabrielle Bernstein, uh, Judgment Detox. It is her latest book. She has a new one. I think it's coming out sometime this year, but um, she's incredible. I was, it's interesting, you know, my friend Jill and I, who have read some different books together recently, and not each other kind of, we share our insights and everything. We both kind of shared something. She had shared it. I don't know if I told her back too, but it was just kind of like, I've never really been that into Gabby Bernstein. Like, I'm, I know who she is. I'm familiar with her. There was just something I just never really connected. I read um, one of her other books, which is called The Universe Has Your Back. And I was like, no, it's not bad. I like it, you know. I I wouldn't say it was one of my favorite books. um, But I did like it a little bit more open. But then this book is just like, I fucking love her. Because, you know, here she does. She lays down the story of her being this, you know, uh, spiritual teacher for, you know, whatever it was at time, long period of time. And she found herself just in massive judgment with people all the time. And as she's writing the first chapter of the introduction of the book, she's literally saying that as I'm writing this book, I'm like, my hands shaking. I'm so, you know, afraid to admit this, but she knew that there was a way for her to really, I don't want to say cleanse herself, but to, you know, work through that judgment to find, And so it was kind of in her own challenges of dealing with judgment that she found a way to kind of, you know, in her language, like detox, like to really heal through this, right? To be able to see with it. And so um, I'm reading through the book with my good friend Jill right now. And they've all, it's been really, really, like really good. Like I'm telling you, sister, even with the work that I've done, all the personal growth over a couple decades, I was like, it was a brutal realization for me, like, like, like painful. Like, and I'm not just, I'm not trying to sound dramatic. Like, I mean, fucking painful to admit and to realize how much that I was still judging people, you know, mostly the people that are closest to me in my life. Like, it's even hard for me to say this right now without like starting to cry. But in going through this work and um, now about halfway through the book, she's kind of got, it's either six or seven steps. We're kind of like on step four, which is being able to shift the way that you see people. And so this is what I want to speak into with you today, because I feel that even though there's kind of been building with the other things um, that she has you do exercises in the book, I feel like this one's super, super profound. Um, 
and I want to I want to keep this episode you know somewhat short and sweet because I want to give you a quick hit of something that you can do that I think is like as I was reading this chapter last night my boys are with a sitter and I'm doing some reading at Starbucks after hitting a spin class I have a little bit of time for me that I read this and I was just like oh, I could it just I took my breath away how profound that it was and you know that she talks about in this chapter too how you know the people that we're judging um that you know we see ourselves in these people right and so there's something that we're being almost like they're acting like a mirror you might have heard that analogy before right like there's something that's being presented to us through this person it's triggering the hell out of us and then we judge them but you know just recognize that that person is you and that's hard to like well what about this person what about this no, there's something there's something in there and I and I say that with love I say that with not me judging you but just like there's something that you need to recognize that that person that you're judging is you it's something that we don't want to see about ourselves so that was the first bit was like oh and something that I've heard before but you know sometimes it's like you'll hear something and you're like yeah yeah it kind of makes sense and then it'll hit your heart and that's a completely different realization I think to intellectually understand something is cool we place far too much emphasis, though, on our mind over our heart. At least in North American society, we do. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm going to generally say most of the world, but yeah. North American society, for sure. That's where I live, and that's where I can speak from. Far more emphasis on the mind. Our, in, our you know, intelligence, like our, you know how we can like think and see, you know, like that, like, look how smart I am, right? That, that type of, you know, book smarty kind of intelligence. We place so much or logical thinking being analytical, right? But the problem with that is we hit, pardon me, we, let me take a step back. We miss having that message, being able to hit our heart. And so that's what that did for me when I was reading it last night was like, recognize the person as you it was like, oh, Man, I feel that. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. That is truth. If you ever, by the way, for me, it's like, I just, it'll catch my breath. Or I'll just like, I just like, I feel like I've been, I don't know, I've never been tasered. <laughs> Those tasers. I feel like I'm tasered. I'm just kind of like, uh, like I just, everything just kind of like stops or goes in slow motion. And for some of you, it might be, you get goosebumps or just you feel it like, oh my God, that's such profound truth. And sometimes there's going to be things that's profound truth that we don't want to hear, like recognize that person as you. We don't want to see. Well, that, that guy's an asshole and he did this or she said this. And I know. Recognize that person as you. But here's the biggest piece, which is, um, and I think I'm going to call the episode this. It's kind of long, but... Um, it was this thing that she talked about and she said that something that she had with students that she was teaching at the time, I don't know what it was, an online course or I don't know, maybe something like that, but is that she had them say this prayer over a week whenever they found themselves going to judgment with anybody, with anybody. And what it's really about is shifting the way that we see, right? So I can't remember if I gave this example to you in a podcast recently, sister, or if it was on a Facebook Live or in a Facebook post, but I'm just going to roll with it. I sometimes don't know. I can't remember where I've given examples, but if not, you need to hear it again. But think of a child having a temper tantrum. If you're a parent, you've been through it, right? Unless you got a really young baby. And if not, hashtag sorry, not sorry. It's coming. <laughs> it's going to come at some point. It's okay. It's part of the process of being a child of trying to work things out, right? But having a temper tantrum, right? And there can be moments as a parent or as an auntie, or maybe if you've seen people, listen, if you don't have kids, man, is it ever easy to judge the fuck out of parents, right? And it is so true. You just wait until you become a parent. Everything changes. You suddenly see stuff and you're judging like, oh, I would never let my kid have a screen until they're at least three or four. Believe me, it'll be like 18 months like with our first one going, Someone turn on fucking Sesame Street right now because I just need to stop. Like, I just need 10 minutes for me. I remember that moment just being like, okay, we're all going to parent the way that, you know, works for us. We think does best. It's not easy, like all that stuff, right? But again, think of a child of a temper tantrum. 
Now, you know that the temper tantrum, temper tantrum has nothing to do with them not getting what they want. Um, I mean, they think it is, but we're going to go to what it really means. It has nothing to do with um, that person did that. They want that candy or grocery store and they see something. It's, it's like really what a temper tantrum is saying. My take on it as a parent is like, mommy, daddy, I'm having problems processing my world right now. And I don't know what to do. And I feel all this emotion. And I got to get it out. Right? Emotion. Energy and motion. I got to move this out of me right now. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lie here on the floor in the grocery store. Yeah, I know it's not good timing. But like I just, you know, I'm two. I can't really understand that shit yet. And so I'm just going to lose my shit because I got to move this emotion out of me. I'm upset. I'm crying. Like I don't know how to process these big feelings right now. That's what a tantrum really means. And so, why am I mentioning this right now? I had a reason for this. I went way off because it's so funny. As I'm like talking to you and I'm doing the visual, I can literally see it in my head. I think I might have even seen this instance of one of my kids. Probably my oldest son, Tyson, because he was had a lot more of that um, than my youngest boy, Kai. But I could like see it and then I got all caught up in the moment. This is what happens on my podcast. <laughs> Ah, it's just like having a conversation. So I'm, look at, I'm just so present in it. I'm like, where were we again? Okay, right. I got it now. I got it. So you can be in those moments of tantrum as a parent, as an auntie, as a friend, as someone in the grocery store just watching someone else's kid lose their mind, right? And we can take a look at it and just be like, oh, God, sweetie, really? Because, you know, we got to get to school right now. Like, this is not good timing. Or like, oh, my God fifth time today we've talked about this no to the you know a uh, cookie 11 you've had 10 like you cut off man there's no more right like or i thought we've been through this you're trying to logically rationalize with the toddler good luck they don't even have the brain capacity to 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 try to you know understand rationalize and be logical the way that we're trying to communicate with them but yeah we still go there as parents right it's like maybe today will be the day nope they literally do not have the you know synapses there in their brain to even have these conversations like just it's not there they don't have the physiology yet or we have those moments when we just get a little bit of clarity and we step out of that and we go oh man my little buddy's just so tired he's hungry we can see that land just they're just having a hard time today right and we step into this place of compassion and love and we see them differently this could be the exact same situation going down right but yet one moment you see them from that place of compassion and love and you're able to kind of also see like what they need which is like man they just need me just just to be there with them they just got to get all this stuff out and they need to know that i'm safe to be around when they do that like i will still be here standing next to you sweetheart get it all out right okay you're telling me that you hate me okay awesome i'm not going to take it personally not easy to do i'm not going to take it personally because you're just out of your mind right now. So I love you. I'm standing right here. I'm here for you. And then there's those moments sometimes, at least was with, with both of my sons, that once they're out of that space, right, and they could just kind of like get it out, then often I could like hold my arms out and they would just run into me and just release a little bit more, right? Like just holding space. Like what a, it's difficult those moments as parents, like believe me, it's very difficult. But in the same respect, what an honoring moment that is to be with your children and have the opportunity to help them, not to like regulate or manage their emotions, but just to be with who they are in those moments and that they're safe. It's okay to feel all those things, right? So we can see them in a certain way. We see the light inside that child who's just struggling to process big emotions at the moment. That's all. Or we can see it as, oh my God, it's annoying. I'm gonna be late. Like again, there's no judgment. I'm talking about judgment, right? There's no judgment either way. I've been both of those things. You will be both of those things, whether you're a parent now or you will be in the future or like, it just is, you know, don't judge yourself over these things. Like just don't, it's just what is, it's good. Give yourself grace, let it go, all that. But imagine if we can take that same compassion that we would have for our toddler or somebody else's or our niece or nephew, having a meltdown, having a tantrum, and we give that to everybody. And we give that same grace to everybody. To everybody. And so when I read this prayer, 
that Gabby Bernstein talks about in the detox, uh, pardon me, the judgment, judgment detox book, which is the light in, wait, oh God, now I'm screwed up. The light in you is all I see. The light in you is all I see. The light in you is all I see. It shifted for me. Does that shift for you? Like, think of someone just in your mind right now that you're just like, ah, just fucking asshole, idiot, like, just, ah, like, just mad, hate did that, rah, like, whoever it is, right? And just, just think of just saying this. She really has this, like, this is, it's to be said like a prayer. The light in you is all I see. The light in you is all I see. The light in you is all I see. And when I read those words, how many words is that? The light in you is all I see. Those eight powerful words. My heart just like... I get it. It shifted, you know. And so I'm going to give you a more tip for today. Which um, she talked about in the book. So I'm not going to take any credit for this. But this is Gabby Bernstein. And she said when she had... Her students, and going back to that story, her students do this over like a week. She said like the profound shifts that happened when it was particularly when they would. So, so here's how this works. So you say this prayer whenever you find yourself going to judgment, like to yourself, you say this prayer, right? The light in you is all I see. And yeah, the miracles, the shifts in people's relationships the, the, the clearing, you know, there's prayer is a very powerful force. I don't know what your beliefs are about it, but you know, it's kind of, for me, it's as um, black and white, if you will, is like saying, well, I don't know if I believe in gravity. Well, you can not believe in it, but it's still there, right? Or you can not believe in love, but love is still the most powerful force on the planet in the universe. It's love. It's love. It's who we are. It's what we're meant to be. It's how we're meant to show up. It's, it's, how we were created, it's it's what we're meant to embody is, is love. And so prayer and, and the power of that is is the same. And you have the ability to impact the relationships with other people, people you love most in your life, and strangers by the way that you show up, by the way that you choose to see them. The light in you is all I see. So I want you, kind of like Gabby Bernstein did in this in the book, talking about their students. Over the next seven days, whenever you find yourself going to judgment about anybody, anybody, that you say that prayer to yourself or in your head, the light in you is all I see. The light in you is all I see. And I would particularly encourage you to do that with those that you find that you're really judging the most, right? It could be your husband, boyfriend, your children, your friends, your mom, your dad, people you work with, like something where that relationship is just really struggling right now, right? It's just, it's not in a, we'll just say it's not in the best place. The light in you is all I see. Now you can take this exercise lightly, lightly about the light in you is all I see. Or you can like really experience this, like really take this on. It's not challenging, right? It's just, it's just a prayer you say to yourself. Write it down if you wanted to remind yourself, but the light in you is all I see. Every single time you find yourself going to judgment. And then I want you to journal at the end of the seven days what this experience was like for you. For you to really get all the juice out of this experience. So, sister, finishing up, two things. If you um, don't know already, I have a newer Facebook community called The Journey to Feminine, which is really having a lot of these conversations. Very different from the beginnings of Women Wanting More in this podcast and the movement. But it's really where it's heading right now, which is conversations like, what does it mean to be a woman? And and how do we really tap into that divine, powerful feminine energy? And how does that impact our relationships if we are not, you know, utilizing who we are as women? And what can we do? And like all these things that so many women are raising their hands saying, oh my God, I feel this too. And so right now there's about 200 and, 220 women in the group. Beautiful group of women. And so I invite you to join us. It's a free Facebook community. So to join us, just go to Facebook, go up to the search, search bar and type in The Journey to Feminine. The Journey to Feminine. So type in The Journey to Feminine. 
and request to be added to the group. And the second thing is, this is really so cool. This is day five as I record this podcast of the 21 day challenge that I created. Women want to more 21 day challenge. Um, there's 22 women that are in this group. It's actually initially designed for 21, but one person squeaked in the last minute. I'm like, all right, you're in. Now the door is kind of closed, right? So that's all, all good. So at the end of these 20 days, since we're going through now, almost a third of the way in, almost a weekend, is to have a plan at the end of like, what do you clearly want to create in your life? And the plan to be able to like, just essentially put it into place. In other words, the only way you could screw it up is you just don't do anything, right? But I wanted to really take women through this process because I want to show them to show you what is possible in not only a short period of time, what's possible in a powerful group of other women that want similar things and what's possible when you really begin to open up a lot of these things that are getting in the way of the life that you truly want to create in your life. And it's a very different way of going about, we're going to call it like goal setting, you know, you know, creating, creating this life for you in this feminine energy, which is very different than how I've taught in the past. So the next one way to challenge is probably going to be coming up in about three weeks. Um, uh, maybe probably two, three weeks when I record this podcast right now. So here's what I'm having women do. And it's already, the wait list is already like half full for the next 21 women. But if you would like to get on the next 21 day challenge, okay, there is an investment for this, but it is something that's open for all women, the bonuses and phone call, a coaching call with me. And like, it's ridiculous how much stuff I'm adding, but I just, I really, really want to impact you. And already in these first, like not even day finish of day five, like just incredible shifts in these women. I'm so proud of all of them that are in this group right now. So if you want to get on the wait list, so I'm just calling it the list for the next one day challenge, just email me drkarenosburn at gmail.com. So it's D-R-K-E-R-E-N-O-S-B-U-R-N at gmail.com. And just put in the subject line, please add me to the list. And I'm putting everyone onto an Evernote doc and I will connect with you um, when registration opens. What that means is when you're on the list is you get a 24 hour period to register to get one of the 21 spots because they will go very fast. Okay, so these 21 filled up, well 22 really, within that week. I, I expect with how many women are already raising their hands saying, I want on the next one, I want the next one that it most likely will flip in like 48 hours. And so what that means is if you ask to be out on the list, so again, email me, drkarenosburn at gmail.com and say in the subject line, please add me to the list, is that you will get 24 hours to register, you and all the other women on the list, before anybody else. Okay, so that you will get like advanced kind of early bird, if you will, registration. And then if there's any spots left after that, then I will release it to the 4,000 plus women that are in the Women Want to More tribe. All right, sister. Thank you for being here today. A life of more is only one step away hmm. from you really understanding not only the impact that judgment is making in your life, but the ability you have to shift the relationships with others and yourself by seeing the light in others every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the How to Get More tip. Subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com slash newsletter.